There's one. Nice one. You know, I've been fishing docks my entire life, and I've probably caught tens of thousands of crappie off of docks. And I've never really thought about just making a video dedicated to this little special thing that I tend to find myself doing ever since I learned how crappy position on docks. So in today's video, we're gonna go over the exact setup, when this technique works, and how to execute it to the best potential. What's going on? Welcome or welcome back to Turner Fishing. I'm Steven Turner. So on today's video, we're gonna be going over something I find near and dear, and that is dock fishing. But this is gonna kinda of be a little bit of an advanced technique. So if you're new to crappy fishing, you know, pay attention to the video and maybe apply it once you get used to fishing dogs. So this certain way of fishing, you've gotta have kind of the right conditions in order for this to be successful. You know, with the invention of side scan and forward facing sonar we're able to see up under these docks and figure out where these fish are positioned and 90 percent of the time believe it or not when you have docks under a floating dock they are positioned higher in the water column than they are on docks that have poles and everything or you know a dock that has a good brush pile on it they may be down there in that brush pile they may be held up on that pole but if you have just a floating dock, nine out of 10 times, they're gonna be in that first eight feet of water. And I've seen this repeated and repeated and repeated over the course of, you know, the seven years that I've had side scan and the four or five years that I've used live scope. Is they're right there in that top water column. But the, the thing is about these fish, and this is what makes this technique so good executing just thousands of fish off docks is these fish are always positioned in the middle of that daggum dock and you got to figure out a way to get there so that's what we're going to cover today is how to get in that middle of the dock one of the key factors in order for this technique to be executed is you've got to have one of three things you've got to have a river current which is honestly the best thing for this technique. You've got to have three mile an hour or higher wind. And you've also got to have somewhere that you're able to get to the middle of the dock. So with the current, we're able to wash our jig up under there. With the wind, we're able to wash our jig up under there. And if you have somewhere that you can cast down the dock in order to get it up under where the fish are, or if you have somewhere you can position the boat to skip up under there to let it wash up under there. Those are the three key things in order for this to be successful. Now, this makes or breaks the technique, what I'm about to explain right now. So if you haven't been paying attention, pay attention to this. Every jig company is not the same. I'm not saying my jig company is the best, but I know these jigs float. There's some companies out there, I'm not gonna name them, they don't float, your jig sinks. This technique does not work as well with the jig. If you throw a jig in the water without a jig head and it doesn't float to the top of the water, that, that jig don't float and you need one that floats. My favorite jig for this technique is the Fluke. This is a 2.5 inch bait, but we're not gonna use the whole thing. So the reason I like the flute is just because of all the plastic on this bait. It's, it's so dense with plastic and it's able to float that jig up. That's why I call this the float rig. I'm gonna float my jig under this dock into the school of fish and I'm gonna get a bite. That's the whole idea of this whole technique is floating this fluke under that dock where it's not supposed to be going and you're getting the fish that have not seen a lure probably in their entire life and when you roll up to a new dock that you find and you float a jig up under that school i'm telling you guys you're going to fire them up and you're going to put a dang of limit in your boat so you want a jig that has a lot of plastic this has just just bulky plastic also the snipe beaver 
as just bulky plastic. This one I don't really enjoy because the tail is more of a falling action. But it does have the bulkiness of it. And obviously, you know, I, there's thousands of fish under a dock caught with the little minnow. You can float a little minnow extremely well. <clears throat> but today we're going to talk about rigging up this fluke for the float rig. So first and foremost, you've got to have a 164 ounce jig head or a 180. I don't sell 180s. I can make 180s, but I can only make one at a time. And, you know, I'm already always behind on orders. I don't have enough time to sit there and make one at a time. I may buy a 180 mold eventually down the line if we can get everything kick-started. By the way, I'm just going to interject all these kits. And I've got bags more kits. They're all going out January 1st. So don't don't waste time. I mean, you know, I've sold a few. I haven't sold a lot. These kids pay the bills. So I'm hoping they start to pick up in sales. But a 164, a 180. And what I'm going to do is on this fluke, I'm going to count down three. One, two, three ribs. And we're going to cut or bite it off. And that's going to sync up to the size six hook perfectly. We're going to go in right here, straight through the middle. Come out right before the tail, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what this float rig looks like. We went a little bit too deep. It's all good. Crappy man jigs, plastic. You can put as many holes in you want, and you're still going to catch fish. So we're going to come out right there. But the dense plastic I'm talking about, I'm hoping the camera will pick this up really good. Do you see how that head? The head is smaller than the plastic. So the whole time that this jig hits the water, this plastic wants to float to the top. That is the whole idea of this. The plastic wants to float to the top. This jig head's gonna make it go down. You've got a loop knot. It's gonna be perfectly parallel. This tail is gonna be wanting to come up. And when that wind or current hits it, this thing is gonna dance. And it's gonna be in the water with that tail going up and down, up and down. And it's washing under this dock. You're basically throwing it beside the dock. This is the dock. It's going to wash up under here and it's going to dance until them fish. Now, the thing with bait fish and stuff, if you got a lot of current, they're going to get washed. That's the main objective of this entire technique is when a school of bait gets around a dock and you get a good wind gush, you get a good river current that they fall into. The bait is actually going to be pushed up under that dock and those fish are just staged up there. You know, just hanging out for the day, getting away from the sun, getting away from predators, staying in the school. But when that bait comes through, you know, one or two of them are going to pop their little heads out and go over there and get them a snack. And that's where, you know, if you're throwing your fluke or your little minnow down the side of this dock, and that's really all you do. I'm going to show you right now. You know, I've got probably video in the back of me catching fish with this technique, but you just throw it out there. You're going to put your finger on the line. And you're going to watch your line at the end of your rod and make sure it's going up under that dock. You want to see your line physically up under this dock. And whether they're 5 feet or 10 feet, you give it about a minute. If you don't get a bite, just let out some line. Let out about a foot. Give it another minute. Let out another foot until you fish that entire 0 or 3 to 8 feet of water up under that dock. And then make another cast. And when you get that bite, that is the key. You've got to remember that's what makes this an advanced technique. And no matter how many people I go out with and set their electronics up or whatever, I cannot teach them enough about remembering how you caught the fish before. And that is critical with this technique. If I throw six feet down a dock and I let it wash up under there and then I give it about a foot, they don't bite. If I give it about three foot, I get a bite, the next cast, I want to throw eight feet down the dock. Or if I can't, I'll throw six feet and then give it four feet right then. And that should be in the strike zone. And sometimes they differ. Sometimes you'll get bit in this strike zone, have to change it up. But nine out of 10 times, you're going to get 
one if you get one bite you can get another bite in that strike zone you may not limit out in that same cast but you're going to put more fish in your boat and that's what this channel is about guys so if i taught you anything hit that thumbs up button for me go out there float a jig up under a dock it's not as complicated as it sounds you just want a big beefy piece of plastic that floats and a really really tiny jig head so when it washes up under there it's not falling all the way back to you you want that jig to be able to be controlled by the water itself you don't have to do anything just wait for the bite